we all know that sigmoid activation function is one of the most popular activation function so we will see here what is actually it is doing how does it work and what are the problems associated with this one let's see in this video hello everyone my name is shiva and welcome to my channel this is part of the series neural network from scratch in python in this series we have been discussing about neural networks and implementing them in pure python in the previous video we have seen the step activation function in detail and addresses its drawbacks in this video we will see one of the oldest and most popular activation functions which is called sigmoid consider the same binary classification problem we have seen earlier so we need to calculate the weighted sum here before applying the activation function so these are the weights 1 2 2 3 3 4 and these are the inputs i am getting so let's suppose that i have calculated the weighted sum 1 2 and 3 so these are the values i will get if i calculate the weighted sum in the previous video we have used step activation to get either 0 or 1 as the output so we got either 0 or 1 as the output from all the neurons but i want to get the output as a probability score so it should not be like only 0 or 1 i need in the range of 0 or 1 so it can be any value between 0 and 1 depending on the inputs i am getting let's say i am getting 1 2 and 3 here all three are different values depending on these values my output should be somewhere between 0 and 1 basically in case of step function we have transformed whatever the values we got as either 0 or 1 now i need to transform any value between minus infinity to plus infinity into any value between 0 and 1 so this can be any range of values so the value can be in between and it can be anything so is there any function which will do like that so the sigmoid function exactly does that now let's see the definition of the sigmoid it is 1 by 1 plus e power minus x if you see the graph the output is always between 0 and 1 so even if the value is minus infinity then the output is 0 if it is plus infinity then the output is 1 and in between values all ranging between 0 and 1 now let's analyze step by step so we have seen okay this function is giving the values between 0 and 1 but how does it work actually so if you see the graph of e power x and e power minus x it looks like this so we need e power minus x so if you observe the limits here so let's suppose i am taking x as minus infinity in that case what is the value of e power x it is tending towards infinity right if i take x as 0 then my e power minus x is becoming 1 and if my x is increasing to positive infinity then e power minus x is tending towards 0 so if you see here these are the limits infinity 1 and 0 as we go from negative infinity to positive infinity now we will see the limits of a sigmoid function it is 1 by 1 plus e power minus x and we know that e power minus x and x value so let's do this if it is minus infinity then it is plus infinity if it is 0 then it is 1 plus infinity then it is 0 now let's see what happens for the sigmoid function if i take x as minus infinity so then it is 1 by 1 plus infinity right because e power x is infinity here then it becomes 0 if i take x as 1 or oh, sorry 0 then it is 1 by 1 plus e power minus x is 1 so it will be 1 so that is 0 0.5 and if i take x as plus infinity then it is 1 by 1 plus 0 because e power minus x is 0 here then it is equal to 1 my x is varying from minus infinity 0 plus infinity and my sigmoid of x is ranging from 0 0 0.5 and 1 this is what exactly the graphs look like right if you see here at 0 it is 0 0.5 and as it goes to the left side as minus infinity it is becoming 0 it goes to the right to the positive infinity then it is becoming 1 here so this is how the sigmoid looks like 
now let's come back to our binary classification problem we need to calculate the output from here right so we got the weighted sum as 1 2 and 3 now we need to calculate the output here so this is like i need to calculate the sigmoid of 1 sigmoid of 2 and sigmoid of 3 right the values are actually these so if i keep here 0 0.73 0 0.88 and 0 0.95 and these particular weights are 1, 2 and 3 here. So if I calculate the weighted sum here, then what exactly comes here? So it is 1 into 0 0.73 plus 2 into 0 0.88 plus 3 into 0 0.95. So this will come down to 5.34. So my value here is 5.34. And if I apply sigmoid to this one, then I need to calculate sigmoid of 5.4, which is 0 0.99. So my actual output from here, it is 0 0.99. So it is not like 1 or 0, like in case of step. It is 0.99. It's just like the probability value. So if you observe here, we have overcome the problems of uh, step activation. One, we don't have threshold here, right? We did not keep 0 as the threshold or anything. So whatever the values we are getting by using those values, we are calculating the activation. And two, if you see here, one, two and three, these are three different values and I am getting three different outputs here. So if you observe the step activation, if it is x equal to one also, I will get one, x equal to two, I will get one and x equal to three also, I will get one. So this is in case of step. Whereas in case of sigmoid, I am getting different values. And if you see here, as my input is increasing, my output is also increasing. So this is kind of defining the uh, weightage of the inputs. So if my input is large value, then my output is near to one. So the values are ranging and it kind of somewhere representing the inputs. But even sigmoid has a problem. If you observe this graph, right? So it is reaching one almost near to five. And after that, it is a kind of saturating. The same way in the negative, almost minus 5, it is reaching 0. And after that, it is always near to 0. So it will not become 0, but it will be always near to 0. So be it like uh, 100 or 1000, it doesn't matter. It will be around 1. The value will be around 1. So this also has a problem similar to the step function, but it never becomes 0. Now let's look at the derivative of the sigmoid. So it looks like this. So just like what we have observed, from almost minus 5 to plus 5, the values are changing a little bit, right? After that, the values are almost saturating in the sigmoid. So that's why the change also, the derivative which is rate of change, that also the values are higher around 0. And as it goes both ways, right, it is almost going to 0. So the derivative is almost becoming 0. It is still not zero. It will become zero only at the infinity point, but it is almost becoming zero. So there will be very minor change, but practically this won't be useful. Is there any rule that uh, my weighted sum, whatever we have seen in the uh, previous example here, is there any rule that my weighted sum will be always between minus five to five? No, right? So it can be any value. It can be like hundred or it can be like minus thousand. It can be any value. So only if it is between minus 5 to 5, we are getting some reasonable change in the output. After that, it is kind of saturating. So even during the training here, as the values are increasing, my sigmoid values are almost saturating. So in the back propagation, my gradients will become very, very less. If you see here, the derivative is becoming almost zero in both the extremes. So my gradient will become very small and it's almost negligible. So the training almost stagnates. This is called vanishing gradient prop. So vanishing gradient, that means the gradient is becoming almost zero. We will use the gradient for updating the old weights. So if it is becoming almost near to zero, then the weight, old weights are almost same as new weights. So there won't be much updation of the weights and there won't be much learning happening. This is the major drawback of sigmoid function. Training becomes very slow. Another problem you see here is it's not zero centered. So if you observe the graph, my outputs are always between 0 and 1. So if you use the sigmoid activation function, we will never get any negative value out of this. So this is kind of putting a constraint on the training. 
we are kind of forcing the network to learn only using the weight updates in one direction so let's see that by using an example so now here what will happen the weighted sum 2 minus 3 so that is minus 1 sigmoid of minus 1 let's suppose that it is 0.2 or 0.3 okay so minus 1 is 0.3 now if I take 0.3 here and if I do multiplication I will get minus 0.6 now this is 0.4 if you observe here whatever the values I am getting let's suppose it is a negative value or positive value the weighted sum it can be negative or positive so let's suppose I got the weighted sum as 10 then it will become 1 right almost like 0 0.9999 like that so whatever the value you are getting whether it is negative or positive my output is always positive so wherever you are using sigmoid activation function you are always getting positive values if these are positive values then similarly in the back propagation when you are calculating the gradient we can't say it is always positive or negative but it will be in the having the same sign in this case the training will take long time so both the points almost leading to the same conclusion which is longer training time right this is the main drawback of sigmoid activation function now let us see the python code for both the sigmoid and its derivative so this is the implementation you can see here sigmoid function 1 by 1 plus exponential of minus x and if you calculate the derivative it will be like sigmoid of x into 1 minus sigmoid of x now if you see here i have implemented the sigmoid function using 1 by 1 plus n e power minus x this is the sigmoid and this is the derivative of the sigmoid so now we will test it and plot it for different values so this is matplotlib initialization just for plotting your graph and what i am taking the input i am taking from minus 6 to plus 6 with the difference of 0 0.01 so this is all setting the x and y coordinates properly and then what i am plotting i am plotting x versus sigmoid of x and x versus derivative of x so it is 0 and 1 because the first value is sigmoid i am getting and the second value is derivative of this so i am plotting sigmoid as well as its derivative so let's run this one and see yeah so if i plot this i am getting like this so i am taking the values between minus 6 and plus 6 and i am plotting both sigmoid as well as the derivative so this is how it works so you can directly use 1 by 1 plus numpy exponential of minus x and the derivative as we know the sigmoid into 1 minus sigmoid so that's what we did here okay that's all from this video uh, thanks for watching if you like the content please hit the like button and comment if you have any suggestions or corrections don't forget to subscribe for more videos i have shared the playlist and resources in the description below in the next video we will look at some other activation functions see you there